Energy transitions are absolutely crucial to understanding societal evolution over time. Every fundamental societal evolutionary step, like going from hunting and gathering to horticulture, then agriculture to industrialism, each of these was an energy transition because agriculture essentially gave us the means for taking over more of the environment around us and turning it to the production of food, i.e. energy, for ourselves and others like us. So we've, we've undergone a number of these energy transitions during our history as a species, and the most recent one, of course, was the Industrial Revolution, which was not just about inventing new machines, it was primarily about gaining access to and using fossil fuels. Now, fossil fuels were and are the most amazing energy source that we've ever encountered. With fossil fuels, suddenly we had access to energy resources that had been created from sunlight using absolutely enormous amounts of ancient plant materials buried in the ground and cooked for millions of years until they became concentrated energy. Maybe you've had the experience of running out of gas in your car and having to push it, let's say, a couple of yards off to the side of the road. You know, that's hard work. Now, imagine pushing your car, let's say, 30 miles. And really think about that. What would it be to push your car 30 miles? That would be really hard work. That would be weeks of work. And that we get from one gallon of gasoline, one gallon of petrol, for which we're paying, let's say, $8 a gallon or $9 a gallon, which is more equivalent to what you're paying here for eight weeks of human labor. You can't get labor that cheap in China, anywhere. I mean, and as a result, of course, we have mechanized every activity that we possibly could. We've reserved human labor only for those jobs that require special intelligence. And we even split that off so that most people are, are sitting at cubicles, staring at in, in the computer screens and tapping keys, so that really it's just, all we need is their nervous system. We don't really care about their muscles because you know machines can do that stuff. Because fossil fuels are so concentrated, we can have tools that carry their energy source around with them. They become tools with a life of their own, like cars and agricultural machinery and so on. And we've even developed tools with a mind of their own, uh, cybernetic tools, computing machines, and, and so on. But as we have used more machines, as we've taken advantage of fossil fuels, we have come to use more energy on a per capita basis. We've become much more wealthy as a result of using all of this energy, mostly from fossil fuels. Now, of course, all of that wealth isn't spread out evenly. Now we have something like 500 people in the world who together control as much in the way of finances as the poorer half of humanity. And, of course, human population, rising from fewer than 1 billion at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution to 2 billion in the 1930s, 3 billion in the 60s, 4 billion in the late 70s, 5 billion in the 80s, 6 billion by 1998, and we've added almost 3 quarters of a billion human beings just since 1998. So this is extraordinary biological success. We should pat ourselves on the back. But it's a perilous kind of success, isn't it? Because it's all founded on the, the ever-increasing consumption of natural resources. Oil and gas are becoming more scarce and expensive. We all know that. Every oil well, every gas well, reaches a maximum rate of production and then begins to decline. Whole countries max out and decline. And this was famously the case in, in my country, the United States. Back in the 1930s and 40s, half of all the oil being produced annually in the world came from Texas and Oklahoma oil wells. And there were a lot of people who thought it would never end. But in 1970, U.S. oil production reached its maximum. It's been declining pretty much ever since. And today, U.S. crude oil production onshore in the lower 48 states is about what it was in 1940. And it's declining 
year after year. Uh, North Sea production hit its maximum around 1999. And just since 1999, North Sea production has fallen by about half. And it's going to continue falling. Britain has become a net oil importer once again. And very soon, Britain will be importing most of its oil and gas. Now, that's, a, that's really a cause for some concern because globally, Every year, there are fewer countries that are able to export oil, and there are more countries wanting to import it. How long can this go on? At some point, the world as a whole reaches its maximum production, and that begins to decline. When will that happen? Most likely within the next 12 to 24 months. So this is, uh, this is serious news because we haven't planned for this. Our policymakers have been operating under the assumption that we'd have decades in which to continue using fossil fuels at arbitrarily high rates, and then we'd figure something else out sooner or later. Well, the sooner or later has arrived, and we haven't figured anything else out.